Hello everybody, welcome to part four of my Desert China series. In the end of the last part I made a mistake I need to correct real quick. Um, not sure why I brought the warrior back from here into our borders. All the barbarians were gone. We didn't need to protect our tile assignment, so I'm going to move him down here. I should have done it a hex at a time. Um, we just cleared out this camp, so I was reasonably certain it was safe. Um, yeah, the position of this uh, city and, like, the hills and the rough around here and the city-state here, like, if there was a barbarian camp that spawned over here, we would have time to react to it and at least keep our most important tiles safe or addressed. Whereas if a camp uh, spawned here, we're, you know, vulnerable here, vulnerable here. So just want to keep some visibility over there. And then the other thing is just this situation. wanted to keep an eye on that because it... Brazil had come up to clear the camp that was here, which would suggest that it wanted to settle, and when I started coming down I found this, and curiously, he did not move nor did he heal up. So this guy I think I'm just going to leave here for now until we figure out what that's about. Um, we do have a scout nearby, but he's going to be focusing more on cloud clear, but it's possible he'll give us some information along the way. We can just alert up right here. Um, stone is a special tile, can't can't spawn there, so our visibility spread is just fine. Worst case scenario is up here, which, you know, we would still possibly have time to react. So this guy needs to heal up. I want to just bring him up on the hill, on um, that way we have some visibility in here so we can see when Brazil, if Brazil, loses interest. Usually in a situation like this, the fact that he didn't move would suggest he either wants this tile or he wants to move through this tile. But if he wanted to move through this tile, usually the AI will take like an alternate path or something. So, just based on that one turn's worth of information, it is looking like this is the tile that he wants. Um, which really wouldn't be ultimately a problem for us, because we just need to get another expand, and it would be nice for it to be somewhere around here for the sugar and the river tiles. I mean, there's some hills nearby and stuff. Um, so even if he settled here, we could settle like on top of him to at least get our other expand, but um, we don't want to have overlapping borders. So, looks like he's uh, heading for the hills though, so to speak. Not literally. So maybe uh, he's done showing an interest in that. Alright, so I've been thinking, and I do think we should head towards Hanging Gardens. I still stand by what I was saying before that the way we're spreading out we will need more military however it had occurred to me that because we rushed these out and now we're taking time to like deal with infrastructure before continuing to expand because we don't want to get the expanding too aggressively diplomatic debuff because if we do you know then people start declaring war on you and stuff and we already have a volatile naval here and a neighbor that usually I think can be trustworthy, but we, you know, kind of scared him off of his own of the settle he wanted. So I don't I don't want to do anything to disrupt that. And I was thinking, if we were to beeline Hanging Gardens and not necessarily build it the turn it became available, but like wait until like the policies here, we get a couple archers out. Um, build the hanging gardens before we expand again. Um, this would leave us with less land overall that we would have to hold down. I would produce some units. Um, we would slow down our overall expansion, which would be good for the AIs, which I'm trying not to let that steer my decision too much. But if we spread too thin right now, especially with low military, we just won't be able to hold those lands necessarily. Um, so yeah, I can see a lot of advantages of getting the hanging gardens out of the way before the settler. <clears throat> and depending on how developed these tiles are, that means we would get, you know, seven, eight turns sooner as well. And of course, the food we would get from hanging gardens would contribute to hammers while building a settler and help to grow the city because we had been keeping the city stunted, yeah, I guess you could say, because of uh, trying to get these expands up quickly so we could secure a religion, which worked. You know, we got first religion. And I'm um, playing that better than I did last series. Last series I had made the mistake of uh, playing the religion game Liberty style while we were going tradition, so I found out the hard way that that's not quite the same thing and it doesn't really work very well. 
Alrighty, so we grew here finally, um, but rather than working two food tiles, I want to work this heavy production tile, at least until we get the granary out. Then between the granaries, two food, and the two food we can find on these tiles, we can actually start growing slowly. But for right now, it would just take forever to get the granary out. So, And then with the granary and working two food tiles, the city will grow more rapidly than either one of those by itself, which means every new citizen will pick up these three free hammers. So it's the best of a bad situation. This really is going to be a pretty bad city, but uh, once we have one more caravan than we have expands, um, we can start feeding this city and it will recover. So right now it's doing its job. It's securing us a religion um, and it will, as soon as this caravan's done feeding it, we'll reverse it and feed the capital from it. Kind of like in the last series. Alrighty, so what's going on here? Six and three... Uh, there's no other really good go growth tile, so we can just leave it like this for now. Looks like next turn both of these tiles will finish up. So we can uh, change it then. Desert Folklore finally got chosen, but that's of no interest to us. Uh, probably from Ahmed? No? Was it Poland? No, because Poland had chosen something else ahead of time. I am kind of curious who went with Desert Folklore. It was Inca. Oh, yeah, that, I guess that does make sense. He's got a fair amount of desert. Okay, I wasn't even thinking about that. When I thought desert, I just assumed... Oh, yeah, Machu. Okay, all right. So he's... Uh, okay, that's interesting. So that means he probably is in the running for a religion. And once he gets it, it'll be a little bit annoying. Um, so we'll want to scout. Keep our scouting up, see what's going on with all of that. All right, it does look as if... Brazil. Oh, yeah. Okay, so they're actually retreating this way while not fully healed. That's not like the AI at all. So maybe the settler's coming over to the west somewhere and he feels he needs more military to support that. I don't know, but uh, that's the case. Like, I'd rather he didn't see us here because then he would know. Well, maybe. I don't know how complex the AI is. Well, there's another expand. Looks like he expanded towards Rome and Rome towards him. Maybe, like, uh, we don't see Rome, but we do see its expand. So, hopefully they'll be distracted with one another. Poland is uh, neighbors with the Iroquois, and the Iroquois tend to grab up land. That would surely make Poland upset. So it is possible that our neighbors are not going to be terribly interested with us. Incas, more so, obviously, but we have a declaration of friendship. And they can go a long way as long as we, you know, keep our diplomacy smooth with them. At least for now. Right now we're fragile, you know. Borders went up a little easy early. Um, military's a little light. So we're a little fragile right now. Uh, first expand is somewhat distant from the capital. So we should do what we can, at least for now. Keep things uh, smoothed over. All right, we got three workers finishing up their projects, and that means that if we change this, we go from five to two, five and two, to four and two. So uh, clearly, that's better. Uh, we're not in a rush to get that paper maker out like we would be. Oh, he's coming this way. There was two of them, so maybe this is the second one coming from up here. We couldn't see him. Probably the case. All right, so this guy can actually start heading back over here. He can cross the river, and then maybe even up onto the hill. We don't need to watch this, I don't think. It would be interesting to see, though, because I kind of wanted to, them to not see me no longer occupying this tile. Like, right now, this guy can see this tile. So I would hate for that to equate to the settler coming back. Wisdom All right, wheel is available. Um, looks like we got a buyer for our horses. Um, our gold is going pretty darn good. Okay, same story here. Let's stay in production focus at least until the granary gets out. I was just thinking with the wheel researched, we might want a water mill in the capital, but focusing on a archer or three and then maybe hanging gardens... Um, we're not going to have time. So we should probably be saving our money up for a water mill. 400 gold. Okay, that's pricey, but... Um, oh, and here's another thing. If we're not expanding, we can actually sell this copper off, right? Because we don't need our happiness to be 8. 
Um, four is a little tight, but keep in mind that not only are these two expands very slow growing, at least for now, once the granaries get up, that'll change. But also the capital, once we are once we do commit to the hanging gardens, we're going to be throwing all the hammers we can at it. <clears throat> and I think that will be the first point where, if the settler building wasn't that, wasn't that, I think when we go for hanging gardens, it'll be the first time we're settling here instead of here or here will really shine. So, let's see here. Yeah, let's go ahead and get mathematics researched. Don't know how soon we'll commit, because like I said, I do want to get some military out. Because um, we do have, you know, this right here, and this is actually a good example of what I was talking about, being defensible, having time to react. Like, we know, assuming that the uh, coast rounds here. This tile exactly is a barbarian camp. And we can see with this hammer on this tundra tile, this is probably iron. We can't see iron yet. And tundra has one food, so this is probably iron. Which means their worker is very likely to dangle here, which means it's very likely to be captured. So I really want to get onto this camp, because that might give us another worker um, and if we can get the homelands we have right now caught up as much as possible, then when we do go to expand, it'll be a lot smoother of a transition. Because the one thing we don't want to do if we do get Hanging Gardens and Petra is we don't want to sleep on capital tiles. We want to make sure that we have, you know, hill after hill getting developed. Um, and then alternatively, if they don't go here, they can come over here. But if they get bombarded by that by the time they even come into our lands, like let's say Zanzibar didn't go first, which they do, and this guy just jumped here, we could bombard, he comes here, we bombard, you know, dead. And uh, then we didn't even have to commit military to it. <clears throat> That's why I wanted to get this work warrior with eyes over here, because every, everywhere else we have time to uh, pull him back if we need to, I think. Alright, so they're both heading a little bit east, um, trying to get some eyes. A lot of empty space out here, so I think that's worth... Uh, looking into and then also we can see that Rome is near but we don't know where so I think we're just gonna keep on scouting like that now this guy can come over the river he's got a good visibility spread don't matter that we don't have sugar cuz you know special Tylenol almost sounded like I said Tylenol okay so this gives us a good yeah cuz he'll hop up on the hill so even if a camp does spawn there right now we can react uh obviously it would be devastating so perhaps i should have waited till he was on the hill before i moved away um for that reason we'll just get him up there right away make sure everything's okay good 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 but now this goes dark so maybe i'll have him bounce off like this every turn and then this guy okay we get darkness around here too so yeah he can bounce like this he can bounce like that and this this right here this arrangement what I'm trying to accomplish here already reveals we're at least one unit light and then of course if we build an archer here and him and the warrior coming over here to address that camp we'll have a bit of a weakness here so I'm thinking at least two archers would be necessary Okay, I did not articulate it, but the whole reason I moved this guy over here is because our borders were saying they were going to go to one of these next. And we get the fresh water without the forest. We'll just jump over there and do that. He can put a farm here. And then... This city will have all of its best tiles. It's going to grow to here next, so hopefully that means it grabs a cattle after that. So I'm thinking maybe have this guy, since he has fewer, less, fewer turns to do what he's doing than this guy does. He can do these three tiles as roads, and he can do these two. And I know it's a little premature for roads, but the capital's mostly caught up. This city will be completely caught up. And then, of course, once the granary is finished, between one cattle and then two, this will actually grow pretty quickly, I think. So by the time the roads are done, we might actually be to a point where it's not going to be at a loss. Which really doesn't matter, because tradition, you know, the cities grow taller, so the city connection, even if it doesn't pay for itself immediately, that definitely makes up for itself in the long run. I couldn't believe how good our gold per turn was, even in the absence of, of trades, just from our city connections. And yeah, Machu Picchu is part of that, but... So yeah, definitely uh, build an archer, and I know this says five, and this says four, um, and with 
a new citizen coming out, this might be more like three, but I don't... I at least want to get two archers out, then maybe we go into the hanging gardens. Because keep in mind, without this policy, our hammers, we're going to be able to make a lot of hammers, but if we can devote the hammers that we're putting into hanging gardens as being magnified, all the better. Um, I would more than happily start hanging gardens without that policy, but let's at least get an archer or two out first. Or I should say two or three, because I've already identified the reason to have at least two right now. Um, then, of course, once we do expand again, um, we'll have more eyes just uh, by virtue of our borders. And so we can like redistribute our redistribute and re-examine our military situation at that time. Okay, so you do that, and we're going to bounce, bounce, bounce with those guys. Okay, hill, hill. All right, lots of empty space out here. No, no uh, AIs nearby, apparently. So the distance between us and Venice looks like it's going to remain uh, decent, which is nice. Okay. Alrighty, so we are at 7 pop. If we come here, 6 pop. Okay, or 6 turns till growth. That, that's, that didn't mean pop. Well, 7 pop was accurate, but I was when I switched the tiles, I was looking at turns to growth. So this is nice. Um, uh, last archer we built said it was going to take 4 turns, so once this is finished, another 4 turns we grow, and then we throw everything into our good hammer tiles. So we might actually be at 8 pop when we first start the... Hanging Gardens, and that'll be right around the time we get the policy, too. So, really, when you think about it, we haven't really lost anything in terms of time and progress there. Um, half a turn, turn, maybe, by that point. Give or take. And we'll just have those keep bouncing here. Let's squeak through here. Okay, now we have eyes on Rome. Okie dokie. Ah, us being on his borders have made him nervous. He wants to see our capital as well. Okay, another buyer for our horses. We can't get enough of them. Oh, he's got a very strange amount of money. Alright, we'll take what we can. Obviously, the horses are just sitting there. You guys tell me what you think. Do I not utilize horses as well as I could? Because it always seems like I have a stockpile of them. Should I be researching and building horses earlier. They would make good scouts and such, so maybe. What, what are the hammers? What kind of hammers are we talking about here? Uh, 75 compared to 40, 56. Okay, so it's a significant investment. Maybe if I didn't build two scouts, that would be a way to kind of compensate for that. All right, lots of mountains on this map, but at least we seem to have found a pass through. Okay, free happiness. All right, so I guess now we know where Brazil settled instead of up here, which is interesting because I'm seeing hill, mountain, river, natural wonder that provides faith, unique luxury, good growth tile. This looks like it would have been a really good settle right here. You know, tradition, one, two, three. Probably wouldn't get that gems, but, you know, you know, who knows. I don't know, but, uh, yeah, if he had settled here, there's no way we would have come down all the way here, because even though it would have been very valuable, it would have been hard to support. No longer friends with Cape Town. Okay, that's going to limit our growth in the capital. Uh, it's saying six turns now, whereas it said six turns last turn, so that's unfortunate. Um, but... Still, we want to grow as quickly as possible, just because that way when we go for hanging gardens, we have as much hammers to throw at it as possible. And Venice actually uh, makes a religion. He's next to the table, not... Well, I guess that makes sense, because Inca was desert folklore. So, um, let's see. Faith from Quarries probably has one. That seems weird. I don't know how he got a uh, religion so quickly. 
Um, but it is nice that they are distant compared to us and that um, at least at first they are restricted to the one city. Obviously they can take over city-states and I don't know how close they are to any city-states but that means with this all the space out here the likelihood that their passive religion spread will at all interfere with ours seems unlikely so that's pretty decent. Because that's going to be our biggest issue. Is That's actually something I want to start paying attention to. Alrighty, so this guy's coming out now. So let's have this guy head over here as well. Uh, we do have another archer coming out that can kind of fill the gap while, until they get back or something. Um, obviously best laid plans and all that. So he'll hop up here. We'll get started on the road. And in fact, if there is a worker up here, then he can take over in Guangzhou... And then the fact that this guy was busy making roads, they can, like, make up for whatever's missing and then start heading down here. Because we could always, like, pre-clear this marsh. You know what? I'll bet you after... Ma yeah, okay. Let's just pass the turn because there's no point in talking about next turn until it's next turn. And it looks like we're about to eclipse the 400 gold threshold. So before we forget, let's go ahead into the capital and purchase the watermill. There we go. We get the one turn back that we lost from losing that city-state. So that's really good. And then what I was going to say as far as after mathematics is done. Yeah, this is an unfortunate little situation because I was hoping to pick up these tiles sooner rather than later because we don't want to lose them to Ragusa. Ragusa can pick up the, uh, four that would not involve crossing the river. And I would hope the governor would prioritize this because of river. Well, maybe I shouldn't hope for that, because this city would, you know... <laughs> poor Ragusa, we're going to have them boxed in real well. Uh, but I think I'll just have this worker come up here and do this farm first. That way, in the meantime, we do have visibility. Obviously, we're going to keep doing that. So, yeah, for research, obviously we do want to go for currency, for Petra. Um, but I think let's take a side jog for masonry uh, for two reasons. We do have a stone tile that we are actively occupying... So to put another hammer on that while we're trying to knock out wonders and settlers and stuff seems like a really good idea. And then, like I said, it looks like we're going to be heading towards a time where we have too many workers. So having one like pre-clear the marsh down here in preparation of our expand seems like a good idea. Obviously, that's not going to be high priority, but once everybody's caught up, which we are heading into yeah he can start on roads here and then he can do he'll, he'll do these two tiles this guy will do these three tiles um, and that way we can keep focus on the capital as much as possible okay granary is done here so let us switch our citizen over to growth and we'll head towards paper maker next um, yeah cuz the gold and the science um, it is looking to me at this point like we would go Hanging Gardens into Settler into Petra. Um, for that reason, like say we get scooped on Hanging Gardens, it would be nice to be able to go straight into Settler and then into Petra. So there is something to be said for researching currency first. Um, but like I said, being able to put a hammer here seems nice uh, for... <laughs> To, yeah, we can start on this before this is even in our borders. Not that that matters too much. He could have come here and started chopping. We grow borders and get the hammers, but we can also get a hammer here. So, yeah. All right, so this guy was heading over here along with the archer to address the camp. Wherever it is, hopefully it has a worker for us. Okay, now we get a little bit better eyes. Okay, and another cattle here. So yeah, settle here would have been absolutely amazing. So I'm not sure what he's doing settling there, but nobody ever said the AI was optimum. And it's really weird too, right? Because like when you have a settler highlighted, the little yellow tridents or cities or whatever they're supposed to be that appear on the map are usually pretty, pretty good. Like if I was intending to spawn here, it might actually say, you know, try here or something. I don't know. Okay, so may purchase with faith. I hate to take the time for this for those who do understand it, but I just wanted to point out, um, in a city like here now, it won't make that big of a deal because the granary's done, so we're going to be growing. But 
start uh, as of last turn the city was growing very slow and it was at two pops so that meant there was going to come a time possibly where this said one follower of the pantheon and one follower of the religion and since that would represent no majority in either case there would just be no influence of the pantheon in the city even though that religion is based on and includes that pantheon so the fact that it says purchase with faith again I want to go ahead and buy a missionary rather than let our faith stack up and try for an enhancement profit simply because if we can actively force the majority in these cities we don't we won't lose this faith because there's four faith here that's from the pantheon four faith here from the pantheon um, and being that we're doing 16 per turn you know when that happened our faith would drop I've had games where that's happened to me and like it puts your profits behind it puts you know your missionaries behind etc etc this way you just do it actively and the faith that you would have lost I don't know that it's a direct conversion, but you basically put it into this missionary so that you can prevent that from happening. And then, of course, by actually spreading it early, you start, you know, resonating elsewhere. Like, Ragusa isn't even under the influence of our capital, so we can start pressuring that by converting Shanghai. And on that note, okay, Sidon is being pressured by the capital, and Zanzibar is not. So I think what I would like to do with this missionary is head north first convert Guangzhou that way Sidon will have two sources of pressure it'll flip quicker Zanzibar will have one and then once this flips it'll have two so we'll basically lock up the uh, north here right away and uh, it's a similar situation over here um, Shanghai would influence Ragusa and Zurich but since we're not actively pa passively I should say uh, pressuring Ragusa already these would fall slower so I w I'd rather invest in the ones that are gonna flip quicker at least f getting started I hope that makes sense all right enough time spent on that let me know guy let me know if, if you guys have any questions about that um, it's something I talk about in other series so like even just the last one so hopefully Let's see, three and one, two and one. That actually speeds it up even more. That is fantastic. All right, so we'll start on Hanging Gardens next turn. We'll grow the turn after that, which will allow us to go dump full hammers. And then the turn after that, we will get the policy to magnify those hammers. So, yeah, these two archers don't seem to have been a problem as far as that goes. Okay, same story. We did convert over to growth, such as it is. In fact, let's just do the bison tile first because... Even though we don't have trapping yet, it will be the first to evolve beyond two and one. Papermaker there as well. Okay, uh, this is a hill, so there's no point in coming here. Um, it's unfortunate because we so many mountains on this map, and we found a pass through that we cannot use. But we still got cloud over here, and that's fine. Um, there probably will come a point where this scout hits something that circling back because near as we can tell we're center-ish so having one scout head east while the other one heads west but right now we do have some cloud near us near Brazil that I would like to address alright so this guy is done with the farm we can go ahead and uh, get started on the roads and since we have, will have masonry, this guy can come do this. And then come here, chop this down, put up another freshwater farm. We don't call him Dougie Fresh for nothing, that's for sure. Right, so bounce, bounce. Keeping those eyes peeled. Uh, and then that's also nice, too, because then if we ever do find a camp via those means, we'll have an exact idea of when it spawned and how soon we have to react to it, etc. Etc. All right, masonry is in fact finished, so we can build our quarry and we can clear marsh. So that's pretty good. All righty, not seeing any barbarians yet, so that's interesting. Um, we, like I said, we we can pretty much bank on if it is in fact here, because that only relies on the coast being here like it looks. This does flare out, so it could be more. Um, but we know they would either go for Sidon, which they'll get shot down eventually, or they'll hold over to Zanzibar. From here we can see that's not what's happening here. Alright, we're up to 3-pot. That was actually relatively quick. 
uh, partially because the horse was providing some food, that and the trade route. Okay, so masonry is done. Let's definitely go for currency because in the event we get scooped on hanging gardens, we want to be able to go straight into, you know, our settler and Petra. The nice thing about Petra is we almost certainly will not get scooped. Um, there are people that could try for it, but they do not have the production compared to us. Uh, Cusco's got the one hill. Uh, Warsaw has one hill, which... I just noticed, look at this, third city, uh, not settled towards us, settled towards the Iroquois, so that's amazing. Um, he's desert as well, but clearly he doesn't have any production, really. One quarry, horse, so yeah, I, I can pretty much guarantee Petra's ours, <clears throat> as long as we stay on task. Anyways, enough jibber-jabber, let's say uh, hanging gardens here, and then next turn we grow. In fact, what we can do right now is, okay, that's two... Okay, that's two. So there's no way to... Okay, I was looking to see if there was a way that we could add some hammers right now without preventing growth in a turn, but that doesn't seem to be the case. What about one in 24? Two. Oh, even just the one food. Okay, so that's the th That's what I should have checked first. No worries. All right, let's try to leapfrog over this guy. No such luck. Uh, definitely don't want to start a war either way. Ooh, we got a good number of units there. Probably dealt with some camp or something. Alrighty, let's keep on. Ooh, more borders. Looks like Aztecs. Oh, well, makes sense. That is the jungle. So, uh, missionary. Like I said, I think coming north first makes sense. So we'll do that. Um, this archer. We don't need to cover up here right away. Not only because we have a little bit of visibility and we just left and these guys will come right back, but I would like to be able to move this warrior back down here, keep eyes on our would-be expand, have the archer take up the center, and then this. So that's kind of something I'm looking forward to. Oh! Okay, well, maybe I should have moved these guys first just in case something like this happened, but the archer is heading this way. It would have been nice if we could have this guy move this way as well. But we will next turn. Yeah, it seems good. Seems fine. Okay, let's get those hammers going. Alrighty. Well, we are at the half hour mark. So I am going to end it here. We are finally starting to get on top of hanging gardens. We're a little late, um, but we do have good production. We haven't identified that anybody's open tradition, but do keep in mind we wouldn't necessarily be able to. If somebody said, oh, hey, hanging gardens would be nice, I'll just take the tradition opener for that, we would never know about it. Uh, plus there's, let's see, two, four, six, eight. There's two AI. Well, we're about to meet one. Um, so there's two AIs we haven't met. So, yeah, we are a little bit late, but once we start, we're going to slam into it good. We're going to grow up to eight pop, which is nice. Shortly after that, we'll amplify our hammers. We do have a lot of hills, a lot of developed hills at that you know, developed horses, we'll get these developed, etc., etc. So, not bad. Anyways, thanks for joining me. Hope you guys are enjoying it. Uh, make the best of the rest of your day, please, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.